Hi guys, welcome to today's episode with my dear friend Tarang Aurora. He is the creative director, I would say artistic director, um, genius designer at Amrapali Jewels. Uh, they are a jewelry house based out of Jaipur and they are legendary. They're probably the only jewelry house that has its own museum, correct me if yes. I'm wrong. Yeah. So he's here with us today and I'm super excited because jewelry is my favorite topic. <laughs> it really is. That's why midday I'm sitting, <laughs> middle wearing, of the day I'm sitting with these emeralds. What yes. am I wearing? You're wearing Colombian emeralds and rose cut diamonds. I'm wearing Colombian emeralds and rose cut diamonds in the yeah. middle of the day. That's how much I love jewelry. It's perfect. Stunning. And actually, you know, they're quite light. Light. Yeah. For being so big. Yeah. 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 That's always the problem. That's always the, the thing which we have to make sure of. But a lot of jewelers in India, because the jewelry is big and heavy, they don't make sure of that. It's usually weighing your ears down. I a lot of girls have to get it stitched up, yeah, their ears. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think we have, because of because what Indian jewelers are used to, because of the traditional jewelry, they've always been big jhumkas, they've been saharas in place. Yeah, yeah. But I think um, more going forward, the wearability is a lot more. Earlier, you were wearing it for a little while. I think our parties are longer, events yes, are much longer. True. So people are wearing jewelry for a much longer time. Um, and that's why I think it's, and, and, and obviously it's much better for the year to wear lighter jewelry, yeah. right? So because I think- Because if you see our grandmother's generation, yeah. their ear lobes would hang, hang and then the ear hole would always be stretched yes. because they used to wear these earrings and they would damage their ears over the years, yes. right? In South, now funnily we're talking this yeah. part, in South, if you go to the tribal area, we have, there there are those earrings called uh, papadums. Okay. And and um, these women are wearing these earrings which, and their their ear lobes are hanging this uh, low. A lot of tribal women have that. So, but papadum literally means a papar. It means a papar, but yeah. papadum is uh, is also a, 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 the, earring. the earring. There are different versions. There's one earring which is also a, Vaish a Vaishnavites, the followers of Lord Vishnu wear. Mm. And they're quite heavy. And these earrings, they're wearing two, three, four of them. Wow. They're hanging this low. And they never get these things stitched because the idea has always been to show the world that this is the amount of wealth ah. I've been brought up with. This is the amount of jewelry. This is the amount of gold I've I have. I have so much wealth that my ears my are ears hanging have exactly, down, and exactly. that's like a matter of pride. Exactly. Cool. I think I'll do without <laughs> it, but that's pretty cool. Cool. Okay. I just want to first roll back um, this conversation to how I got to know about Amrapali. And as we discussed, I think we both were in college then. Yeah. And the movie Troy came out and I was in London and nobody wanted to see it with me. So I went alone to the theater to watch it, which I have often done in my childhood because yeah. I, I just love movies. And if nobody went, I would just go. So I went alone to watch it and I came out being like, what was that jewelry? It was, I guess you had made this these beautiful pieces. Amrapali had designed these yes. beautiful pieces for the movie. And I started doing some research. I was like, where is this jewelry from? Then I found out it's from India. And then I found your store in Delhi yeah. when I came back on holidays. It was silver gold plated yeah. and it was very Roman, yeah. but it could be very Indian also like yes. from back in the day. Oh, it was something else. So when we got the opportunity to do um, Troy, I was still in London. I was studying then and my dad and uncle were the founders got um, this opportunity. Warner Brothers contacted them, came to Jaipur um, looking for Amrapali and um, what they wanted was jewelry for this historic movie, right? It's such an important part of uh, history, history yeah, European Helen of history Troy. Helen of Troy and Troy, Troy like infamous exactly. in history books. Right? Exactly. So. so I think where it all started, even for me learning about the brand and learning about the crossover of tribal jewelry the crossover of how uh, the designs were so overlapped. If you if you see, I mean, you've seen the museum in Jaipur and you come to the Amrapali Museum, you see how um, African jewelry is, uh, is, is tribal jewelry is made and you see books and you see the similarity in Indian jewelry. You see... But how? Because back in the day when people weren't traveling as much, travel was very difficult. Yeah. I'm saying tribal jewelry from back, back in the yeah. day, from say the Roman Empire yeah. and then Africa at that time, you're saying the techniques were similar. The, the, because the tools were, there were limited amount of tools, which was, which was used in by all different people across the world. But how and did they all know that different, it's just, it's just, it's a coincidence it, that it all is, their it tools is, are the same? It is, it is a coincidence and all their shapes are the same. Now the tools are not necessarily the same but there were there wasn't a method of making a spear somewhere 
maybe someone was making a spear of stone maybe later on it was a right, wood right. and then it was a, but it was a spear yeah. right so that technique they knew they have to make a spear so i think that basic knowledge was was with everyone and that is why there has been such a great overlap and obviously um, my dad and uncle involved in the brand recreating old pieces or at a lot in the in the past uh, uh, um, uh, redoing old pieces they knew how to present the right piece for a movie such as this yeah i think that was a very important part in the in in the history of amrapali also i mean in my personal history yes because that's how i got to know it's just yeah. too beautiful and of course it's a brat pit movie and yeah. it's um Diane Kruger yes. wearing the jewelry so like you can't forget it yeah. it's on yeah. a very very big scale yeah and it's know? and it's rajasthani not yeah. even in it's got like uh, it's got like threads and it's got thread with pendants and exactly Amazing. so Amazing. such an overlap across the world um in the museum you'll see pieces which are portuguese because we had that influence people you uh, you'll see pieces from andhra pradesh which almost look like greek um or european so we also in india were in the recent past we're getting a lot of overlaps mm. we were we were we were getting uh, people from across the world who were coming to india teaching us we were taking these things uh, uh, from them learning them very well we've had a very very um, strong past in learning all these techniques from from world over you're in the second generation yeah. of the business how did it begin it began as a silver business right so in 1978 my dad and uncle um uh, rajiv varora rajesh ajmera both of them were history students in jaipur and friends um met um, and uh, they eventually figured that they want to do something related to history our family comes from a strictly professionals family okay so my my grandfather was an advocate both my uncles are advocates my dad's um uncle um is a doctor my grandmother's a doctor so very professional driven right. that that kind of setup yeah. my dad was a brilliant student in school my grandfather had different plans um like everyone else not an engineer or a doctor but this one is going to become an IAS officer and that was the dream for him <laughs> yeah. so it was uh, a bit of a dream shattering from my grandfather to know that my dad wanted to start do something related with to business with jewelry and business yeah um uh, at that time they just wanted to do something with history business. they didn't even know what they wanted to do mm -hmm. um my uncle rajesh uh, he comes from a background where his father was a, a emerald uh, dealer in jaipur okay. one of the best ones at that time but he was not that inclined on stones he wanted to again do something related to history so both of them got together they started a little business of handicrafts Hmm. they started getting boxes made in wood getting inlaid done on them and they would come to delhi and they will go to bombay they'll go wherever and they'll try and meet cottage emporium and all the buyers of different uh, uh, stores across the country and sell those someone told them that there is a stone called garnet out of jaipur and i'm looking for 500 strings or 1000 strings or something um they came back and then they started looking for what the stone is and when they started doing that and they started supplying this to someone they realized that the jewelry business is to find history or truly find history more than handicrafts or more than anything for them is jewelry hmm. um today when we talk about this i always say the the two major thing of permanence when it comes to heirloom is metal or is property True. right so that has what, what we just talked what about what we pass on what we pass on uh, traditionally yeah. it's not clothes it's nothing else clothes handicrafts is a newer is a newer thing but you cannot yeah. you can they will not survive 400 years yeah, 800 we were just years 600 years the maintaining sometimes the maintaining is, is exactly is, is difficult yeah. so so uh, property and 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 metal yeah. is what i feel um, is it's one of the for most for and for exactly. passing down is the best so that's what they figured mm -hmm. they both started to learn they taught themselves about the jewelry business they had no clue and this was i think the most exciting thing which you could have they could have done at that time because they were practically involved in learning about the about jewelry they basically just took a car and started driving through rajasthan to gujarat to maharashtra and going through small villages and while doing that they realized that the best way for them to find old jewelry <clears throat> is go to a pawn shop 
to a sarafa yeah. sarafa yeah. ki dukan what mm. and what these guys do is they basically have the local villagers coming and giving their jewels right. and then eventually not being able to pay paid back so these have. guys then melted down so these two kids turn up young boys saying ah, that listen we'll take it we'll take it we'll give you a premium on it please don't melt it and when they started learning about this whole thing they started feeling that how can you melt it the problem though was that they started uh, with with basic pocket money saved and they started the business so <clears throat> there was not much savings and they could not put everything and they were falling in love with these pieces they could not put so many pieces aside as collection uh, they had to sell them they had to make money right right so this was a catch 22 the for them going, so yeah. for the business going but they always thought that if we are ever successful in 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 our lives with with this with with jewelry we would want to make a museum because at that point they could not find a single uh, 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 museum single place where they could go and learn about indian jewelry until so today there's no thought from the 70s from the 70s from yeah from early 80s Amazing. they were like listen yeah. we if we ever end up doing this we have to make a museum because okay even if we talk about jewelry if you go to a museum and you talk about jewelry you only see maharaja's jewels right you see only what rocks. about what people wore like every day yeah what every people day wore or in the tribal rural areas tribal areas so so you go to rajasthan you come to rajasthan it's 46 degrees 47 degrees they're nomadic most of them so what do they do when they don't have bank accounts when they don't have anything where do they put their saving they put them on themselves hmm. because if she's working during so the day she buys silver she buys silver she, wear she wears it. it and she upgrades to a bigger bracelet and, and it's just safer because she's on her it's on her she doesn't have to leave it at the house so even if you come to the museum we we'll, uh, we have anklets these girls were the moment a girl was born the family always <clears> thought that we have to secure her future so how do we secure that future okay the best way the moment we can save enough buy uh, a silver make 2 2 kilos each anklets thick ones at the age of 12 13 they give it to the daughter that if she gets married at 15 16 18 in those days has this with as her security. as a security mm-hmm. if she needs it some day so like how in the south they give the coin necklace exactly exactly right. but today like I mean I don't know you'll do an FD for your kids right, or you'll buy a, a yeah. flat or whatever I don't yeah. know but this is what it was for them at that point <clears throat> I I I feel like you bring a lot of modernity I know you use traditional yes. um you know practices That's and, exactly the and idea. metals and stones but there's something very traditional and modern at the same time about Amrapali now yeah. especially the fine jewelry yeah. like especially what like for example what I'm wearing yeah. things like that now your pieces are very relevant for non Indians also for younger indian people also yeah. Yeah. right so i think you brought that freshness maybe so i think that was a learning curve in my personal journey when i uh, went to do gemology in london hmm. and we started uh, the uh, concession in selfridges right that was the right time when you would see what clients are wearing right i mean you, learned, you, you yeah. we we learned all of those things and and listen i was in jaipur I was not in Delhi or Bombay or Bangalore right. and I'm, we were in a very small city today Jaipur is everybody wants to be in Jaipur yeah 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 so uh, at that time Jaipur was a very, a very small, small town. traditional yeah. town you know uh, I mean uh, probably handful places I still remember there was one five star hotel where we you where it was a big deal to go out for dinner right. at and 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 from there I was put into selfridges in London right so the 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 whole um atmosphere everything changed for me so i just started noticing and and there was so much information from from what a a, a lady is wearing and what shoes she is wearing what bag is she wearing yeah. what color because it all kind of goes together exactly yeah. it has to go together yeah, yeah. um uh we didn't know what chloe was at that right. time i didn't know a lot of brands in the world and and that was <clears throat> part of learning and and the good part for me i think was that i was i was i was doing gemology i was learning about gemstones we had a concession selfridges where i would learn something i would come there i would use the things which i have learned in the morning mm. to on a, on a client to sell a piece of product and, and i see. sold something for 800 pounds or 1000 pounds and i'll be amazed i'll be excited a 19 year old yeah, just did a sale just because amazing. of what he learned in the morning yeah. so i think that really motivated me and then you wanted to obviously see what other jewelers are doing what other uh, uh, clothing brands are doing how a clothing brand is doing 
uh, 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 fashion, they are doing shoes, they are doing sunglasses, they are yeah, doing they're everything. They're diversifying. Diversifying. Right? Yeah. And and, the and product category. Exactly. Yeah. So which did not we did not have that exposure living in India, especially mm. in Jaipur. Mm. Um, so that was a the turn, and that is where I think I tried to um, uh, incorporate both these worlds together to do modern pieces, to do modern, uh, and then our exposure to uh, uh, Middle Eastern shows, clients abroad, also my I mean, dad... clients must be your biggest muses, right? So, like, like private clients, exactly. not even famous people. No, so your client is your biggest teacher. Your client is your biggest teacher. So they, yeah. they, this is what I have learned from my dad and uncle. They always say that they are your biggest teacher because they will explain <clears> you what you have done right, what you have done wrong. I was on a video call till about 8.30 yesterday with a client and um, and we did many uh, uh, good orders with them and yesterday what we had i had done she wasn't 100% she's like listen this time it took longer this was and i was actually very happy that i was getting that feedback mm -hmm. critical feedback is always appreciated right. it's more important and then you understand what you did wrong and yeah. you improvise it so i think uh, i've done that constantly and i still do that so who's your biggest muse right now oh i think uh, i I think an, an Indian lady, the modern woman of India, is the biggest muse. Um, it used to be the West. You used to look at the at West for so much <clears throat> of inspiration, as I just told you. Yeah. And it's completely opposite now. It's opposite. You're cre creating for the Indian client you, because she is in an Indian attire. She is wearing a sari. She's wear, she's shopping on Fifth Avenue. She is yeah. in Tokyo, and and you have to design for multiple purposes. outfits, multiple purposes, yeah. multiple occasions. Okay, so tell me from all the stylists, so many stylists take jewelry from you for yeah. celebrities. Yeah. Who, who do you think has styled, which actor ha you think has styled your pieces really well? Give me one or two looks that really stand out to you in your memory. So I think so something which I did recently was for uh, Sonam because Sonam and I, we were she very, she, she's, she's, she's yeah. I, I mean, I love uh, yeah, yeah. designing for her just because she has that vibe to carry anything. And uh, she is that... Indian uh, 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 lady, Indian actress who is as Indian as it could be and could be as Western as it could be and I there's agree. a very good balance with her. So we yeah. did a necklace, a choker with lots of pearls and lots of hangings for her. This was for the NMACC launch. NMACC launch and it was it was a different different coloured stone. Yes. It was like a charm necklace. Charm, a charm choker. Like a charm choker. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. And it was it was very large. And and that was uh, very cool. Me and Ria spoke regularly. Yeah. And, and Ria has a great um, a great eye as well. Exactly. I, I mean, she, she Ria has good vision to yeah. see what would look good. You know. Yeah. Love designing, but but I think any project where we get a lot of input, and where the the um, the person you're dressing is uh, um, is happy to experiment. And, and is not always thinking that, oh, this is my typical look because that experimentation, that is the, that is the change, right? right? That is how you, and, and uh, whenever I'm doing something like that is actually the most exciting. What are your like horror stories with clients? Oh my God, that's not, <laughs> Ek toh, that's, that's not like good. I said, I was talking to someone else in design as well, like Indians love to haggle. That's a thing. But you are very patient. I've seen you. You have yeah, the patience well, of a god ha with people who haggle. I mean, I'm sure my <laughs> me and my family included. But um, how do you deal with like really difficult clients? No, I think there's not. I, I never find this to be a difficulty. It is just as particular as they could be. I mean, I could be in a in a in a completely different setup, and I could be getting a tailored suit right. and I could be very difficult with and, and that's what I could be perceived at but right. if I'm spending $2,000 on a suit or a $4,000 on a suit I want to like be and now they're spending a lot more on, on jewelry I mean they have the right to be as I said yesterday I was with a client and she was very particular and I appreciate that um, but tell me a horror story a fun one without names come on it'll be fun so this was, this, was a, this was a fashion show which happened I don't know, maybe 12, 13 years ago um, in India and we had done the jewellery. The showstopper um, was a bit tipsy and would not return the jewellery and said that was, should be treated as a payment to wear jewellery and we were just, I was just, I was still young. So once getting again, the, you're, there was a showstopper at your fashion show yeah. who refused to give the jewellery back yeah. after the fashion show. So your security guard was running after her? So but there was no security guard as such because 
because every you know everyone and yeah, every, isn't but it? But still, these these pieces are worth a lot. Yeah. So so I mean that was a little and and that's when I called my dad. I was like, listen, I can't control this situation. But did you get it back? Yeah, yeah, we got it back eventually, <laughs> but not at the sh fashion show. It was she written, took it home. It written in the hotel. Oh. She took it to the hotel, changed, and then eventually requested the um, the stylist. That listen, we so she, the stylist had already told us, don't worry. It'll, she's just a bit tipsy and fun at the moment. From when you started to now, how do you think the luxury market in terms of jewelry has changed? Are people spending a lot more on jewelry, on fine jewelry? Has it gone down? Um, how has it, it shifted the market in these years? We have uh, regularly seen a growth, I can say 30%, um, 25, 30% growth year on, on year, um, especially in fine jewelry from last eight years, nine years specifically. COVID was obviously yeah. uh, a, I mean, a not slowdown, that, yeah. but um, I think after that, things have changed even more. Hmm. What had happened after COVID is that prices got revised of everything. We have seen this across from a Birkin to, to everything which a was- A lot of luxury the, items. Top luxury items. But don't, haven't those prices gone up? They have gone up. Yeah, they've That's been what I'm revised saying. like they've revised gone Revised go to gone up. Yeah. And when that was happening just with fashion pieces also, this is now again, we are talking about precious material. Right. Which is weird to, we have seen this with gold in the last three years, gold four years specifically. Yeah. We have seen this with diamonds regularly. We had a bit of a CVD scare. Still diamonds have, they had a bit of a correction, but they've still been okay. So you think lab, lab grown diamonds made that correction? But lab grown diamonds made a correction just I think this is my 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 independent view because everyone was a little scared that what's going to happen because will it crash yeah. will things will how will things be perceived yeah so that because that the, the price of the diamond fell a little bit and fell now, a little bit. Back up? now it's again maintained a little <clears throat> bit up yeah. it's not falling uh, further down it's a very healthy sign showing that there is just a new edition of a clientele hmm. your Diamond clientele is not switching to CVD. There's a new clientele which is which is being upgraded who was not wearing diamonds is now going to be able to have gone crazy in the last four years. Emeralds have gone nuts. And, uh, and, and this is a story which I keep telling my clients yeah. that it sounds like a, 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 a marketing strategy of a jeweler to keep saying the same thing that, oh, buy this today, it's going to get more expensive. It actually has. I have... What I hear you telling clients is that you know what you bought back then? Exactly. You know how much it's worth now? <laughs> I, I have to know. I mean, I'm giving so them an confidence. it's no? 100% an investment. Yeah. No, clients don't come back and say, okay, this is my old piece, take this back yeah. um, and, and upgrade me. Very, very rarely that happens. Yeah. But, uh, the client should be uh, we need to give that, that that much confidence to the client that's traditionally what Indian jewelers Jew do though do. Yeah. but that is also mostly driven by gold prices gold prices okay. right whenever the clients have done that it's always driven by gold prices um, if you are looking at uh, jewelry which is selling in the market it's usually gold price wastage profitability and a breakdown so I call it you're not buying jewelry you're buying a commodity wearable commodity it's like a piece of art what we are selling is a piece of art yeah. where there's very value addition yeah. where there is where where i bought some gold it can take two months to make a piece <clears> versus <throat> 20 days or versus 15 days to print out more pieces right so there is a value addition in our pieces and then there is a colored stone angle to it Premium, which is right? very important now i think yeah specifically with the three big three the uh, emerald sapphire and rubies so what stones actually come from jaipur because these stones are actually not from jaipur you guys source them and bring them nothing to is from jaipur but everything is from jaipur what we about are the semi-precious we are the biggest cutting center of jaipur ah. jaipur is the cutting center so for all the stones land up in jaipur yes. because they come there to get cut yes but none of these stones are actually no. from jaipur no no where are the best Stones from. Well, well, all <laughs> over the world, right? So Zambian emeralds or Colombian emeralds will come to Afghani Jaipur. Afghani also, I've heard. Afghani emeralds yeah. would come to Jaipur to cut. Um, same with rubies, uh, Burmese, B and, and, and Ceylon uh, sapphires. Kashmir was a very important uh, deposit for India uh, for Kashmir sapphires, which, is, which doesn't exist anymore. Oh. So that time we were cutting, uh, um, India was cutting those. But we have the best craftsmen we have the best so it all ends up there. it all ends up there so that's why i see like the the like the lady from like 
Bulgari, what's yes. her name? Lucia. Lucia is always in Jaipur, yes. looking at stones, posting about them. Yeah. It almost feels like all the stones are like there. Yeah. yeah. So specifically, emeralds, it's the biggest cutting center of emeralds in the world. Hmm. Um, and, and then lots of stones. So I can not say that for rubies because I would think Bangkok would be the most, is the biggest cutting center for rubies in the world. Hmm. But we do get rubies as well. And, and Bangkok will get emeralds as well. It's not like, but, but emeralds specifically, in Jaipur is the biggest cutting center and a lot of other semi-precious stones. Mm. We have the best cutters, which has been traditionally there since since years. Since Maharaja times. Yes. Um. And, and, and I think we have done very well. Um, Jaipur has done very well because we have taken all these uh, different arts which were, which were uh, given to Jaipur. We have uh, the miniature art, the, the architecture of Jaipur, stone cutting, obviously, jewelry making. Um, block print, block printing, yeah. textile uh, wise. Uh, Jaipur has a lot. So we have yeah. Jaipur as a city. Those lark, those bangles. Bangles, handicrafts. Bangles, handicrafts. It's so we, endless. There's so much. Yeah. Anything to do with uh, 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 designing, with with craft. Jaipur has been. That's why I think it's become such a center. Yeah. That everybody in at least in anything artistic in any artistic field wants to be there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's 100%. cool. You know what I've noticed also, which I think is nice, um, at least amongst our generation, other jewelers, like legacy jewelers, I've seen you guys all have a really good relationship. You know, and you are in direct competition with each other. Like, you know, like uh, other people your age who, yeah. who, are, who are big jewelry families yeah. in Jaipur who would be your competition. Yeah. Today's generations, I think we are, we are friends because, because for me, uh, the main... Um, the main thing is how to get Jaipur more importance, get onto the map of the world, get get highlighted there, make want people to come to Jaipur. Because if 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 Jaipur succeeds, listen, every jeweler who's then you there, all succeed. we all succeed. So you're seeing all the bigger the picture. Hotel owners will like, succeed. Yeah. All the block printers will succeed. We have, uh, I mean, we have City Palace, we have Rambagh, we have Jaipur. Mm. We have so many palace properties. We have locations for weddings. There's so much which Jaipur is at the moment offering, and I think all our efforts together is a better story is something which is more inviting it is something which is which is more forward thinking and i feel there's enough to do in the and and the competition the is good is big the big for everyone yeah. exactly and i think if we are cordial we at least know what's going on in each other's lives and yeah. we know who's buying what at what price and who because because it's part of the game as well internally right, right? right because right. we could be told that oh i sold this to that one for this much and 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 so you automatically think oh now the prices have gone up should i offer more Hmm. Right, so those games are also played within the within the dealers, the jewelry and, community. Yeah. So, so yeah. It's, it's good to be open with each other. This is yeah. what I feel. Yeah, I think yeah. it's nice. The camaraderie yeah. is really nice, exactly. and I think the fact that you're looking at the bigger picture is amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's very mature and yeah, like it's forward thinking, which is a thing of our generation now. Exactly, which is good. So, who would be the one one or two people who haven't worn Amrapali yet, who you would just love to see your jewelry on? So we've um, uh, been involved in doing something recently and uh, we have an opportunity where Zina Taman is going to be wearing our... Zina Taman is an icon. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I just feel that she's not been in the circuit for a, for a, for a while now and she's coming back and, and, uh, and someone who's, who we have all seen, grown up with, right? Mm, who, like idolized. Idolized, her. exactly. Yeah. So I think that is, that was the, the moment I heard that. I was very excited to know that she's going to be wearing um, uh, Amripali. Um, someone who is not with us, which is Sri Devi, mm. would was someone who I adored because she was. Um, I mean, I, 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 she was. She would pick up the phone and she'll tell me, "Tarang, I'm doing this," and and the just the way she was so hands on. She didn't need a stylist. She won't go through via, via, via anyone. And she'll speak to me directly and she'll tell me what to wear. And she had, she was such again, a, a, again, a style icon. So I think uh, I really miss her, her yeah. because I used to be really um, in a regular touch with her. <clears throat> so I really miss her and, and, and then just talking. And as I was saying, the, your clients are your best teachers. Who better to teach us other than Rekha Ji, now Zina Taman, I'm talking about Sri Devi. That's you know, they, 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 they teach us and this is what my, especially what I'm doing, right? With my business, so yeah. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. 
I have started feeling very bored with seeing everyone <laughs> doing the same thing in their weddings is doing the big pole key the collar necklace the call the necklace Everyone's and then a collar necklace. that and and even even where, what you were wearing right so that was made for you right and when i get a call oh can i get something which pernia was wearing and i'm like why do you want to wear what pernia was wearing i mean i i understand why but don't you want but to make your unique, own look, look unique, make yeah. yourself she made her own look yeah right she got things changed and she did whatever she wanted to do and so does everyone else but the problem which i'm seeing now more in the wedding market is that oh this one's done that can i wear that or my friends done that or the celebrity has done that why don't people go out and try should an experiment I, should i tell you i have an tell answer me. for this see not everybody and i don't blame people obviously like everybody is not like obsessed with Jewelry. fashion and jewelry <laughs> like i am and like so many other girls are but a lot of people just want to be safe <clears throat> they don't want to take a chance because they don't know they don't have the vision or imagination that if i make something unique will it look good on my wedding day i don't want to mess up my wedding day i want to make sure i look amazing you know it's for that reason they feel like okay so and so has worn it it looks good on her i i know it's safe i know for a fact if it looks good on her it look good so i think that's the reason so, but, but as a jeweler have you moved from this whole I'm, like polki brigade the big polki thing is not your I, thing i i i don't i don't want to do that anymore i don't like to do that anymore yeah. i just find it overdone too much and um, as i was telling you before colored stones are much nicer to work with simple What's things it? you don't even need to be it doesn't need to be colombian and zambian and most expensive you can just have turquoise and you can play with a little bit of semi red in it stones. semi precious stones you yeah. know i'm doing combination of, of of amethyst and rubies that's beautiful small rubies yeah. amethyst we go to the west we see a western brand doing fine jewelry putting a tons of colored stones semi precious colored stones a little bit of a uh, 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 precious stones in yeah. them and 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 people are loving those right? right so why can't we as um uh, as a society who's buying jewelry is involved in so much we are the biggest consumers of jewelry of gold actually in the world biggest consumers of gold of gold but why world. are we not the biggest consumers of jewelry well i i'm when i say ju- gold that uh, why i'm saying gold is because gold is sold other than jewelry also right as bullions as right. coins exactly. so the so so jewelry automatically falls under that so when you are when we are do, when we are a society who's who's been obsessed with jewelry we started this conversation with tribal women hoarding jewelry on themselves right. as savings right then to this why aren't we looking at colored stones why aren't we looking at some precious stones why because, are we stuck in because trend setters uh, celebrities trend setters within their communities um social media um people who have like a big following small following they need to do it they need to like do women it. who do take risks women who do like to be different once they do it then it follows exactly. you so, know what i mean i'm sure you see that when your jewelry is worn by someone who's stylish yeah. so like or at least like perceived as stylish then you get probably a lot of orders on that it, right so <clears throat> uh, what i'm trying to say an amethyst which is used in silver jewelry there can be space for the top quality amethyst in fine jewelry also why not and we need to open our minds to be But able Sabia to accept it but sabia is doing it yeah, yeah sabia yeah. is using i mean he does in his Coral. fine jewelry he do he uses semi precious stones yes, also yes yes yeah yes but again a lot of polki a lot of polki i'm saying have the colored stones as the as the main no no he does color stones main, stone main oh, also because yeah. i've been i i saw he does he there was a whole necklace made of uh like a pink stone yeah i don't know what it rose is rose quartz probably but it's definitely or, not or, a ruby you know it's or definitely a morganite yeah it's a semi precious stone yeah. a whole a full yeah. necklace there's yeah. a beautiful video on instagram of it being made also so i know he's using colored semi precious in a big way so i think that yeah. is where we it's need nice to it's nice though he's changing exactly. the trend it's so nice so we need to go nice. in that direction yeah. we need to have more of that you just want something new new you exactly you want to stay at the same exactly. old polki bazaar exactly. get over it exactly and then there's big polkis and i feel very stressed myself handling these polkis and shipping them from one store to the other What? they're big polkis they can crack they can ah, you know they're, they're fragile they're fragile at the end of the day but i'm just for me i just don't want to see a collar necklace anymore <laughs> exactly i just bust now please guys let's move on yeah see there's so many designs <laughs> to be inspired by look at the amrapali instagram page of nothing else yeah, yeah, yeah. i just can't because you know what i feel collar necklaces they become so popular they take over the person the person exactly i feel like it, it's very overwhelming on a lot of girls you know it's just like whoa like it's a lot so whenever i'm making jewelry nowadays i specifically tell them 
this is a big necklace but the earrings are small yeah, and the clients are clients are telling me oh it's such a big necklace why not earrings can we add more Nein. i said listen shaadi hai na i said more ah, more more you yeah. you're telling me to add more value to it yeah. which is only going to make your billing higher which is fine with me but trust me it does not it, you do not need it, it has you to do not forward. need it the necklace need to be the focus of attention not the earrings not the necklace and Are, but big, with all so, of this the girl gets lost exactly where is the girl exactly exactly i mean it now was this is the problem with i yeah. think with a lot of brides no yeah yeah but chalo is there a big day who am i please wear all the collar necklaces <laughs> you want <laughs> this is just my humble opinion but everyone's big day everyone has a vision yeah. that's what's yeah. important i yeah. think you should just be happy yeah. but uh ha huh, i want to ask you so what's your vision now what's the future of amrapali so um we are um invested in our um brand tribe a lot more now yeah um obviously amrapali stores are everywhere but we are actually expanding tribe um you'll see a lot more tribe stores coming up at the airports i see and, a lot of airport yeah. um There's a lot of airport marketing you guys do and hardware yeah. stores and stuff. So, so I think that is very, very important for us. A lot of malls, um, and uh, as we were saying, so that's an en- entry price point brand, and we see a lot more scalability in that. And I feel that is serving a much wider and fun audience. So we have uh, a wedding jewelry in in Tribe as well. Ah, But I didn't know that. It's it's silver. That's Someone cool. who's not is not looking to spend a crazy amount is doing a a a a, a wedding in a in a, um, like a simple wedding like a simple wedding or is is, is traveling abroad and doing a mm. wedding destination destination wedding and 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 there's always a hassle of customs and and all of that so they want to take silver pieces which is which is going to be easy so I think for that uh, specifically this jewelry works very well for gifting this jewelry works very well it is something which we think is. Um, the next step for us and to make this cuz you like as you said that um tribe by amrapali is very scalable it is very scalable so that's your it next, is that's your and plan. it's exciting yeah. hmm. and we have more collaborations happening in that as well hmm. remember you did all these um collaborations with designers there was a manish arora x amrapali collection that yeah. we, we sold on pop up shop many years ago yeah. then there was there was more masaba there's yeah. manish. manish we did uh, fine jewelry with uh, with anamika did you enjoy these collaborations the, i it's it's uh, it's outstanding and did Because they sell really well this sold extremely well i remember the manish arora one was so cool the the so the cool. main exciting part for us is that someone who has n- has n- no knowledge of jewelry as such has the fashion knowledge but how it needs to be made comes to us and yeah. manish being manish at that point comes to us with all these psychedelic colors and designs yeah, and yeah. and asks us to achieve those you want to achieve them no matter what i and think the incorporation of like of course the colors but like nature and yeah. animals and yeah. it was just so cool was there was so no one doing enameling at that time a- in silver all enamel it was so we were, cool we were we were the, this was 2013 yeah and uh, we this 11 years ago i know at ago. pop up shop we sold out yeah. of your yeah. jewelry i don't yeah. know if at your stores you must have also done really well no no this it's it's uh, um it did extremely well yeah. the first collection speci- especially because that was the first the time. first one yeah, that always manish arora was first yeah. right it yeah. was amazing yeah acha now tell me last okay now i keep i don't know who was your favorite bride who wore and you don't have to say me because i'm sitting here But who was your favorite bride that wore Amra Pali? I mean, I've of course. Listen, you, so you you Tara, were there. You're being very boring. No, so all I'll, your I'll, answers are very diplomatic, I, and this is not fun. No, so um, we have had. No, again, how, I don't okay, want. Okay, I'll tell no, you. No, no, no. you I'll tell you. We've had many beautiful brides. All brides are beautiful. We know yeah, that. well, well, we there is like that. But tell no? me, who was your favorite? Just choose I th- one. I think I think I think Sonam did a very good job. She did the whole hair. She did the hair oh, thing. The hair she thing. did a lot of hand jewels. Were, and was any of it vintage? The hair piece the completely, hair completely was completely vintage, vintage. Completely an old piece. Yeah. She um, was very excited. She was like, "Parents, I've ordered something, and my whole hair had discovered." She, so it was a necklace. She wants to be a jewelry head to toe. So it was a necklace, and and then yeah, we did it on yeah. the. But again, what we were talking about prior, right? There is a way to do it. It wasn't over pole keyed up. It didn't feel like that. right. So it was colored stones. It was not very big pole keys in, at all. There was no yeah. pole keys oh, at, there was at no all. Pulky, huh? There was no pole keys. It was a vintage uh, the uh, head, choker. The head, the neck was and, vintage, and, and, yeah. and, and the vintage necklace and the pearl bracelet. So she wore a lot of antique. Basically. So she basically wore a lot of uh, and and timeless pieces. No, yeah, yeah. Um, because you, I'm not going to say this because of your wedding look. But uh, your uh, um, in the, the reception here, the reception, the, oh, the headpiece, and 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 I've added that. I've seen so that. many people do it so, now. 
so, Although what I wore was also antique. It that was a is, vintage yeah, piece. It, was, it was an old piece. Um, I wore these earrings from my reception from Tarang that were like a vintage piece. But I've seen a lot of like in pop culture, like I've seen a lot of actors for songs or like social media people, like people who do semi-precious or costume jewelry. A yeah. lot of people have are doing that now. Yes. I think, again, you don't need to overdo it. You just do it the perfect way. Maybe one piece, go OTT with that. Yeah. Do it more traditionally, nicely, because it's a tradition. A wedding is, an Indian wedding is a traditional uh, uh, a festival occasion, occasion yeah, yeah. right? So, so, you, so, so I always feel that do it the way it was always done. And, and it gives a, gives the best results. So you like traditional brides. I, I definitely. Like classic traditional brides. Exactly. Brides. Always. Nice. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much, Tarang. This was so much fun. Pleasure. I thank mean, you for having I, me. I'm the biggest fan of Amrapali, but I just thought that um, the few people living under a rock who don't know who Amrapali, what Amrapali <laughs> is. Now, today, after this, they better know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you.